So welcome back to the Turning Tides DLC on the Battlefield 1 CTE. Today we have a big improvement that's landed. You might have been able to notice it. Textures. DICE added them last night in an update to the client, making them available on the Cape Hells and Achi Baba maps. And I've got to say, it gives me a much better impression of both maps overall. There have been a couple of changes to both of these maps, but in this video, I'm going to specifically talk about Cape Hells. I'll make another one about Achibaba tomorrow. This map, Cape Hells of the Two, is the one that I had most concerns about when I first played it, I think over a month ago now, when it first landed onto the CTE, when the map had no textures whatsoever. At the time, I felt like the presence of planes on the map had far too much impact on the battle that was going on down below, and there wasn't enough cover for players to use as they traversed that sloping hillside, capturing different objectives. Now, I think both of those issues have been massively improved on by the map simply having textures enabled and various items of soft cover being added as well. Previously, the map was all grey, and that made every single player stick out like a sore thumb. Pilots could really take advantage of that, and they could target them pretty easily, and that just led to huge killstreaks just sitting at the top of the leaderboard. And it wasn't just pilots, scouts with bolt-action rifles could also easily see their targets at range, and that made it very easy for people to be picked off. Now though, with ground textures enabled, we have this like barren, scorched earth brown mixed in with green grass. Most of the soldiers blend in a little bit more. Of course, as soon as somebody starts moving, it's very easy to spot that person, but for pilots being such a distance away, they'll find it a little bit harder to pinpoint those targets if they're going on a strafing run or a bombing run for that matter. And textures will also add a little bit more soft cover with trees and bushes sticking up off the ground, and that gives players more chances to hide basically in plain sight. You might have missed that person who just stuck their head out from behind a tree or is concealing themselves inside a bush. So in that sense, there is a lot more cover now on this map. I'd also say that the textures has made the gameplay flow a lot more naturally and led to those moments where you don't spot people than it did in the last test when we didn't have any textures and you simply would have been spotted because your vision of the map was so much clearer without anything in the way. This means gameplay is far less cut and dry and is much more dynamic in my opinion. Flanking becomes a real gameplay tactic now, and overall the map is just far, far better than what it was without textures. But I guess that is the beauty of testing something. You can see what it plays like without all of those features enabled, and as it comes together towards the end of development, textures and other things are enabled, and you can see how gameplay changes. This is really a great example of what this kind of development really does to your mindset when you're playing. Now, Cape Hells is also the map of the two so far that runs the Conquest Assault game mode as opposed to standard Conquest. This is where the Ottoman Empire, who occupy the land, they start with all Conquest flags captured and the British forces landing on the beaches, they need to take back flags from them to balance out the game. Now, at the start, the British have 250 tickets advantage, so they don't immediately fall behind the Ottomans, who essentially have overall control of the map at that point. Now, either team can still win that round, and the standard conquest rule of the first to 1,000 points still applies, but the British can actually lock out the Ottomans and stop them from spawning if they control all of the flags, take over their HQ, and start killing off all the players who are still on the map. When I first played the game mode without textures, I didn't really like it all that much simply because the Ottomans had such a huge advantage looking down the hill towards the beach where all of the British soldiers were just running to try and get to that first flag. Now, however, with the textures enabled and a little bit more cover added to the beach, I actually really enjoyed the game mode. I played about three or four rounds last night. I think we won three of them and lost the other one, but overall I had a really enjoyable experience because I wasn't getting slaughtered the moment I ran off of those boats. There's a little bit more cover down there now and multiple points that the British can climb that first hill and they can get onto the rest of the map. It flows really well from the start now. 
So based on the various different playtests I've taken part in so far for Cape Hells, it's gone from being a fairly mediocre map in my opinion, to a much better one, and now one that I would be comfortable playing every single time it came round in rotation. Players who like infantry combat or aerial combat will probably feel right at home here. The L-Class Destroyer does make an appearance on Cape Hells, but I think it will play more of a role on the other two Turning Tides maps that are coming in January, Zeebrugge and Heligoland Bite. Both of those are proper, all-out naval warfare maps and should accommodate that brand new destroyer much better than here on Cape Hells. There's just not a huge reason to really go for it here, but I will have a video coming up at the weekend on it, so look out for that. But thank you very much for watching today. Let me know your thoughts on this map down below in the comments. I'm sure many Aussies will be happy to see some Anzac soldiers as part of the British forces here. And if you do leave comments, I'll try and read as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.